Good day, our dear listeners. Welcome once again to our Salida Teleradio right here at La Filipina National High School. Today, you will learn another interesting topic about composing an independent critique in English 10, Quarter 3, Module 3, with your teacher broadcaster, Teacher Princess May Corayag. This is your host, Meldalin Lamparas, turning you over to Teacher Princess. A pleasant day, viewers and listeners. Welcome to our episode this afternoon. Despite the pandemic, we are glad that we will be able to deliver our lessons to you through our Salida Teleradio. Once again, good afternoon, learners. This afternoon, we are going to discuss on how to compose an independent critique of a chosen selection, which is part of your Module 3 in English 10 for Quarter 3. Before we start with our discussion, I am hoping that you are all comfortable now with your seats and places, together with your ball pen, notebook, and a copy of your self-learning module. And as we head to our topic, let us be guided first on how we are going to accomplish today through our objectives. Lesson objective number one, know the basic ways of critiquing a selection through principle or form. Lesson objective number two, explicate whether you agree or disagree with the author through your composed critique. And our third lesson objective is compose an independent critique of a chosen selection. Before we delve into our discussion this afternoon, I am inviting everybody, all the learners, to participate on our first activity, which will be named Fill Me With Feelings. Feelings because we're going to involve some emotions on our activity this afternoon. At this very moment, you're going to have our fun time. In this activity, you will get to express your personal ideas, opinions, feelings and emotions about a certain topic or the headlines that I'm going to share to all of you. Whether you like it or dislike it, disheartened by the issue or amazed. Reminder also to all the students that you will be given a five second allotment on each item. Of course, though not limited, but you can express your answers by picking or drawing on your notebook one or more of the following emojis, such as we have the like, dislike, heart, if you really love it, disheartened or brokenhearted, shocked, angry, worried or wary, wow, happy, and sad. These are the following feelings or emojis that you have to write down on your notebook as your reactions to the headlines that I'm going to present to you. Let's start! The first headline is Philippines Samantha Bernardo wins first runner-up at Grand International. This is actually timely because we have just had our the coronation of Miss Grand International which happens that our Philippine representative is the first runner-up. What do you feel about this headline? Your five seconds starts now. Okay, time is up. Some of you might have answered happy and some ha might have answered also wow, heart, and like. Or if you didn't like the headline or the news, you can actually uh, give your feelings or your emotions to sad or you're angry because you did not agree with the result of the coronation night. Let's proceed on to the second headline. For those who are watching Netflix, this headline is actually nice to hear. Pixar's Ronnie Del Carmen works with Netflix on Philippine mythology animation. Students, learners, what do you feel about this? Your five seconds starts now. 
All right, so some of you might have answered happy, heart, and like. And some of you might have answered also some wow or shocked. All right, let's proceed on to the third headline. Our third headline is uh, also, uh, also happened here in the Philippines. Taal Volcano, island remains ghost town a year after eruption. Learners, students, what do you feel about it? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you feel sad about it? Your five seconds starts now. Alright, so some of you might have answered sad or most of you or majority of you felt sad about it or disheartened or brokenhearted about the issue. Now let's proceed on to our fourth headline. Anne Curtis, do you know Anne Curtis, an actress here in the Philippines? So here's our headline. Anne Curtis' baby Dahlia birthday UNICEF fundraiser raises 1.8 million for Filipino children. So there is a fundraising happen. What do you feel about it? Five seconds for everybody. All right, so some of you might have answered like, heart, shocked because Anne raised some kind of fundraising like this. Wow, happy. And now let's proceed on to our last headline. Children as young as two rescued from abuse ring in the Philippines. What do you feel about it? Five seconds starts now. Alright, so unfortunately, or this headline is really unfortunate. So some of you might have answered angry, sad, worried or wary for the children disheartened or brokenhearted and you really not like the headline that you have just uh, read or watched so that is our first activity students fill me with the feelings did you have fun i am pretty sure that you had fun and uh, before we're going to have our discussion i have some few questions to you have you ever experienced giving reactions or opinions, ideas to some topics or issues? Nakapagbigay na ba kayo ng mga reaksyon or sarili ninyong opinion sa isang uh, particular na mga idea or katulad ng ginawa ninyo? Just like what you have done a while ago. You, you're giving your personal feelings or emotions towards the headlines that we have read. Um, how did you do it? Paano nyo ito ginawa? Through writing ba? Or sharing it to a friend or posting it through a social on your social media accounts uh, did it happen that your opinion is different from other people nagkaroon ba ng panahon that your opinion is different from other people's opinion and of course if you happened uh, to read an article or selection or story did it happen that your personal take is different from the author's take now, students and learners, all of the questions I've asked to you are all related to our topic this afternoon, which is called Compose an Independent Critique of a Chosen Selection, which is found on your Quarter 3, Module 3 on your Self-Learning Module. Now, let's try to know first what is a critique paper. A critique paper is an academic writing genre that summarizes and gives a critical evaluation of a concept or work. What type of work is this? It can be articles, stories, poem, book, and the like. When we're going to talk about critique, critique is a particular academic genre that requires you to carefully study, summarize, and critically analyze a study or a concept. When we're going to talk about study, you have to read it again and again and to know the background of the author, the style of the article, or how is it written, and the use of language or the jargons. When we're going to talk also with 
critically analyze, this is where your composi composition happens. Dito nagaganap ang paggawa mo ng iyong personal na critique. Uh, uh, with the meat of your opinion and your idea. And of course, if you are asked to write a critique of an article or an essay assigned by your professor, you analyze the reading first, and then you identify your personal reaction to it, and develop a clear, concise explanation of your or the support for your reaction. When we're going to talk about analyze the reading, you have to know uh, the style of the of the writing itself, the mood, the language, as I mentioned a while ago, the jargons, and of course, we have to include the author's background because that's part of analyzing. The next one is your personal reaction. May mga nababasa tayo na we do not like, because of the way it was written, because of the language that was being used, or because of the type of persuasion that took place or that took place in the particular article. Now, when we're going to talk about the personal reaction also, if you like it or dislike it, if you agree with the author or disagree with the author. When we're going to talk also with the concise explanation, here happens all the support or the evidences of your claims or of your personal reaction but it should be brief a brief explanation your knowledge or yung kaalaman mo of the discipline in which you are working is the basis on which you build the explanation successful critiquing remember all learners that successful critiquing begins with the reading you cannot give your critique if you will not read the article, the story, the book, and the like. You can't make or compose your own critique if you won't and if you can't read. Most of all, you need to be knowledgeable about the issue or the topic. Another one is composing a critique for a chosen selection suggests that the role, your role, as the reader is vital to the meaning of the text. When we say vital, it is important, it is salient. That means you have a big responsibility of your work in making or composing your own critique on a particular essay, paragraph, story, or a book. Now, so what's the purpose of critiquing a chosen selection? The purpose is to examine we have to examine, we have to analyze, we have to identify. And of course, if you have your personal opinion, you are or, or personal idea, you give your explanation why you like it or dislike it. And then, if you have given your side, if you have uh, uh, expressed your side, you have to defend also, but not defending on a shallow basis, but you have to defend it using your evidences or some data that you have gathered. Remember also, when you're going to make your critique on a particular um, uh, essay or a, write, um, a literary piece, there is no right or wrong answer in critiquing a chosen selection. Walang tama o mali po dito. However, it is pertinent, it is important that you demonstrate an understanding that means if you're going to make your composition or to have your composition, your critique, you have to express your idea, not in a shallow way, but you have to demonstrate that you are knowledgeable about what you have read, of what you are doing, of what you are critiquing on a particular literary piece. Understanding of the composition and clearly explain and support your reaction. There are some other tips that we have to take into consideration, such as do not use the standard approach of just writing such as I like this text because it is so cool and the ending made me feel happy. By making a critique, you could just not write this statement. Another one is, I hated it because it was stupid and had nothing to do with my life and was too negative and boring. If you disagree with the author, if you disagree with the literary piece, you can actually give your claims, 
but support your claims. In writing a critique, you may assume that the reader has already read the text. Thus, there is no need to summarize the contents of the text at length. That means when you are going to make your critique, you need not to summarize the story, the poem, or the book. You have to, but still you have to consider the parts of writing a critique. You have to have your introduction, wherein you're going to give your, uh, to provide your claims. You can start it with a quote or a line lifted from the original story. And then on the body, you have to support your claim, your personal, your idea or your opinion about your critique. And the last one is you have to conclude your composition. Instead, you need to take a systematic, that means when you're going to talk about systematic, it, it should undergo a process, analytical approach to the selection. You have to have your way, your strategy, your techniques on making your critique. And of course, in composing a critique for a chosen selection, it is fine if you do not like the selection, but you need to criticize it either through principle or form. So speaking of principle or form, this is now the time that we will get to know how we are going to critique or to make a composition out from a literary piece through using the questions under the principle or in form. If you're going to critique a particular piece using the principle, you can actually ask these following questions such as, is the selection racist? Does the selection unreasonably put down things such as religion, group of people, such as women or adolescents, conservatives or de democrats, etc.? Does the selection include factual errors or outright lies? Or is it too dark and despairing? Sad, saddening ba ang story? Or is it falsely positive? Ibig sabihin na, is it saying something that is not true? Is it deceiving? When you're going to critique something using the form um, case, you have to have asked these questions or these following questions such as, is the selection poorly written? Or is the selection too emotional or too childish? Does it have too many facts or figures? Are there typos or errors in the selection? May mga mali, mali ba sa mga words? The technicalities of how it is being written? Do the ideas wander around without making a point? It, uh, uh, is the literary piece uh, bidding around the bush? Is it, is it not making any point? Pa ulit ulit lang ba ang kanyang punto? Is it not making a giving any gist or meat of a story, such as? Now, in each of these cases, do not criticize but provide examples. You have to provide your examples. Be cautious of criticizing any text as confusing, since readers might simply conclude that you are so slow to understand and appreciate it. So, I bet that you have understood some basic ways on how you're going to make your critique. Uh, some gist coming from our discussion is you have to provide a critique that is um, coming or that is based from your opinion or idea, but it should be supported with evidences and data. So now, let us practice your knowledge and skills in composing your own critique using the short story that I will share to you entitled The Three Little Pigs retold by Flora Annie Steele in 1922. Now before anything else, I would like to request once more all the learners to ready your notebooks and pens for you to take notes. You will also get to answer some questions after the story. Are you all ready? Now, let's start! The Three Little Pigs Retold by Flora Annie Steele in 1922 Once upon a time, there was an old mother pig who had three little pigs 
and not enough food to feed them. So when they were old enough, she sent them out into the world to seek fortunes. The first little pig was very lazy. He didn't want to work at all and he built his house out of straw. The second little pig worked a little bit harder, but he was somewhat lazy too and he built his house out of sticks. Then they sang and danced and played together the rest of the day. The third little pig worked hard all day and built his house with bricks. It was a sturdy house complete with a fine fireplace and chimney. It looked like it could withstand the strongest winds. The next day, a wolf happened to pass by the lane where the three little pigs lived. And he saw the straw house and he smelled the pig inside. He thought the pig would make a mighty fine meal and his mouth began to water. So he knocked on the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me in, let me in. But the little pig saw the wolf's big paws through the keyhole. So he answered back, No, 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 not by the hairs on my chin, it chin, chin. Then the wolf showed his teeth and said, Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. So he huffed and he huffed and he blew the house down. The wolf opened his jaws very wide and bit down as hard as he could. But the first little pig escaped and ran away to hide with the little pig. With the second little pig. The wolf continued down the lane and he passed by the second house made of sticks. And he saw the house and he smelled the pigs inside and his mouth began to water as he thought about fine dinner they would make. So he knocked on the door and said, Little pigs, little pigs, let me in, let me in. But the little pigs saw the wolf's pointy ears through the keyhole. So they answered back, No, 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 not by the hairs on our chinny chin chin. So the wolf showed his teeth and said, Then I'll huff and I'll huff and I'll blow your house down. So he huffed and he huffed and he blew the house down. The wolf was greedy and he tried to catch both pigs at once, but he was too greedy and got in neither. His big jaws clamped down on nothing but air and the two little pigs scrambled away as fast as their little hooves would carry them. The wolf chased them down the lane and he almost caught them. But they made it to the brick house and slammed the door closed before the wolf could catch them. The three little pigs, they were very frightened. They knew the wolf wanted to eat them. And that was very, very true. The wolf hadn't eaten all day and had worked up a large appetite chasing the pigs around and now he could smell all three of them inside then he knew that the three little pigs would make a lovely feast so the wolf knocked on the door and said little pigs little pigs let me in let me in but the little pigs saw the wolf's narrow eyes through the keyhole so they answered back no 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 not by the hairs on our chin 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 so the wolf showed his teeth and said, Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Well, he huffed and he huffed and he puffed. And he huffed and huffed and he huffed and puffed and puffed. But he could not blow the house down. At last, he was so out of breath that he couldn't huff and he couldn't puff anymore. So he stopped to rest and thought a bit but this was too much the wolf danced about with rage and swore he would come down the chimney and eat up all the little pig for his supper but while he was climbing onto the roof the little pig made up a blazing fire and put on a big pot full of water to boil then just as the wolf was coming down the chimney 
the little piggy pulled out the lid and plop! It in fell the wolf into the scalding water. So the little piggy put on the cover again, boiled the wolf up, and the three little pigs ate him for dinner. So that was our story entitled The Three Little Pigs. Did you like the story? Now, before we are going to proceed on making or composing your critique out from that story, I would like to remind everybody to please get your notebook and your ball pen as you're going to finally answer all the following questions. I have nine questions for you. And these questions will be your guide for you to create your first critique using the story that I've shared and told a while ago. So I hope that everybody's quick and ready to jot down all the questions for you to make also your answers. Now the first and second questions. First one is, what is the title of the selection that you have read? Ano ba ang title or ang pamagat ng ating story? Number two, who is the author of the selection? Third question is, what is the gist or ibig sabihin the meat or the main idea of the selection? Number four, what does the selection have to do with you personally? Does it relate to your personal life? Do you like it because you have heard this before? Number five, does the selection agree or clash with your view of the world and what you consider right or wrong? The moral of the story about the three little pigs. I bet that you have gotten some moral lesson from the story. Coming or based from the moral story, do you agree with it? Or does it clash with your view or perspective or principle that you have in your life? Number six, what did you learn and how much your views and opinions challenged or changed by this selection? Number seven, how well does the selection address things that you personally care about and consider important to the world? Number eight, what can you praise about the selection and what problems did you have with it? And the last question is, how well did you enjoy the selection as entertainment or as a work of art? All of the questions that I've asked will be based personally on how you're going to answer it based on your personal idea and opinion. Before we're going to head to our last activity, let us remember that in the composition of critique of a given selection, the reader or writer, and that is you, is essential to the meaning of the selection since they bring the selection to life. The purpose of critiquing a chosen selection is to examine, explain, and defend your personal reaction to the selection. When you're going to write your critique, write as an educated writer, addressing other writers appropriately, politely, humbly. And of course, as a writer, be cautious of using words like boring, crazy, or dull. If you compose a critique, base it on a principle and form of the selection itself. The form and the principle, we have already discussed it a while ago. Now, the primary challenge of composing a critique is to show how you connect it or how well you are connected to the selection. So those were all the four basic reminders in making or composing your, an independent critique out from a literary piece. Now, before we're going to end our discussion, I am going to give you your assignment. Compose your own critique of the provided selection entitled The Unicorn in the Garden by James Thurber. I would like to remind everybody that this um, literary piece is found on your Quarter 3, Module 3. The title of the selection is The Unicorn in the Garden written by James Thurber. So you have to follow the guide given in the previous activities on the composition of the critique those nine questions that i've asked a while ago 
those will be considered as your guide for you to make another critique but using this selection the unicorn in the garden by james thurber reminder everybody that you have to submit your outputs to your respective grade 10 english teachers on the second batch schedule of answer sheets retrieval of course your answers or your composition will be graded using this rubric the first criterion is introduction and conclusion you have to make all yes of course you have to make your introduction and conclusion the background of the history five four three and two will be your scores five as the highest the second criterion is the main points how well developed how well you developed your main topics and topic sentences that relate directly to the composition. The third criterion is the organization or the organization of your ideas, the structures and the transitions of your words. And the last one is your style, your sentence flow and the variety. And of course, before I forget, we have our last criterion, your mechanics. The spelling, the punctuation, and capitalization of your words and letters. So that's also included. Five is the highest score. So I hope that everybody's clear. This is your assignment. You're going to make your critique. Your guide questions will be based from those nine questions that we have used on the three little pigs. But on your assignment, you're going to use the unicorn in the garden. I hope that you have learned something significant on our episode today. I hope too that you had fun with our short activities. As much as we would like to extend more time, but we have to come to the end of our discussion. Till our next time, learners, this is your teacher broadcaster, Teacher Princess Macy Korayag, leaving you a quote taken from Sabrina Newby. True humility is being able to graciously accept criticism as we accept compliments. Thank you and goodbye. Wow, that was a very comprehensive and engaging topic, Teacher Princess. Thank you so much and thank you viewers and listeners for tuning in. I hope that you have learned something from today's lesson. Once again, this is your teacher host, Teacher Meldedin Lamparas, saying God bless and have a nice day. Bye!